Hello and welcome to another episode of Greensleep Talks. My name is Kate Armitage and I'm your host for our discussion today. I'm delighted to be joined once again by Natalie Hughes, Director of Partnerships and Corporate Accounts at The Algorithm People. Hello, Hi, Natalie. Kate. Hi. Um, by way of introduction, could you please tell us a little bit more about The Algorithm People? Certainly. So The Algorithm People, we uh, help many fleets in the UK, predominantly in three different areas, uh, optimization of fleets, so making sure that they make the most efficient use and utilization of their vehicles and help with their planning. We also help on decarbonisation of fleets, so helping fleets to understand where to install charging infrastructure, also on the transition between their existing fleet to electric vehicles, and also we work in innovation where we have projects where we're working on new innovation technologies to enhance our algorithms and services to our customers. Great, thank you. Thank you, Natalie. So today uh, we're going to be discussing the growth of electric vehicles and what more needs to happen in the transition to mass market. Uh, the latest figures from the SMMT show that battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid vehicles reached 17% share of new vehicle registrations in July, which I think we'll both agree is great news, um, very exciting times. Um, what would you say are the main reasons that EV sales are picking up pace? So it is a fantastic start. And I think working within the industry for a number of years, I think we're really pleased that it's finally getting there in that transaction and transition. So we believe there's a combination of factors that is driving, I think, government policy, without a doubt, in terms of driving demand um, and the race to net zero. So many corporate businesses now have objectives or fleets to get to net zero by a, a, you know, 2025, 2030. So therefore, it is driving demand. Um, fleets are adopting the decarbonisation strategies as they look into the transition between their existing fleet and alternative fuels. And it's the vehicles themselves and the choices in the market that are actually increasing. So we're seeing a lot of traction this year in the commercial fleets with LCVs mm -hmm. where there's more options with longer range. And I think there's more confidence in terms of those being able to fit their, their existing business needs. So I was going to say it's a combination of all of those factors which is seeing the increase and I think more and more we're talking to customers around what is their plan and how are they planning the transition so we're expecting this to just see increase year on year. It's it's a really positive story Natalie and and I agree that there's not there's not one silver bullet that there's a number of factors in play that have seen this growth but I'm going to flip that question on its head a little bit now because whilst 17 percent market share of new registrations is um, uh, perhaps beyond many people's expectations it still means that 83 percent of new vehicle registrations certainly passengers passenger cars and small vans are still ICE. So why are businesses still choosing ICE vehicles over and above uh, a plug-in vehicle? So I think in the recent past, we heard all the time around range was the largest blocker in terms of the decision making, along with payload, uh, infrastructure limitations. However, we're seeing that the market is moving at pace with the latest figures from SMMT showing attitudes and the procurement decisions are changing. And I think the other thing is for fleets, sometimes this is a two, three year decision making process in terms of looking at leasing of their existing vehicles. How do they plan that change and then starting to put, you know, the changes in place for the future. So we're seeing a lot more of the decision making, you know, and decisions now for what will happen in the next six months, a year, 18 months. And we are seeing that transition. I think we'll continue to see a year on year increase as fleets move from the early adopter phase to the early to a early majority, so we expect to see a big shift. Yeah, I, I think I think it's a it, it's encouraging to hear that um, you've got businesses who maybe haven't put their plans into action yet, but there's plenty who are who are planning and, and getting ready to make that move. Um, we often when we when we're doing Greenfleet talks, uh, we often focus on 
uh, the vehicle itself and the choice of vehicle and availability uh, and sometimes then the the discussion moves on to recharging equipment and, and what they need for infrastructure but what other aspects do businesses need to consider before switching to EV? We always recommend that it's evidence-based analysis is the first step that fleet should consider on their journey to full electrification. And this is looking at their business requirements in their journeys today. And there are a number of EV toolkits and expertise in the market to provide these services. However, at the algorithm people, we don't believe it's not enough to look just look for like for like for replacements it can be too simplistic. We believe that looking at the fleet holistically and using technology such as uh, the algorithms within our portfolio will help those procurement and infrastructure decisions. So rather than saying we have a fleet of 200, what do we need to do with those 200? You need to look at them, see if you can improve those journeys and at the improve the efficiency of the fleet and those journeys before making the decisions on which ones will switch to EV and where to install your charging infrastructure. So for us, we would always recommend that it's evidence-based analysis is the first step rather than deciding where to put charge points, deciding which vehicles to switch, you should really do that upfront analysis on your business. And, that, and Natalie, that is such a strong message that this you have to look at your plan holistically um, because if you are simply thinking, well, this vehicle's coming up for renewal, I'm going to, uh, is it suitable to go electric this time or not? And um, you're always going to have those difficult vehicles, um, mm -hmm. you know, and we're not talking about carbon reduction anymore or emissions reduction. We're talking about net zero. So your, your plan has to somehow address those really difficult to reach vehicles as well. And, and by looking holistically, you stand a much better chance of doing that. Um, I think too, too often um, we've, seen, we've seen parts of projects getting carved out for a phase two or a phase three that never happen because they're too difficult. Well, we haven't got that option here. So that holistic planning that the algorithm people do, I think is absolutely crucial to that. Um, we've worked on a, uh, with a customer earlier this year in terms of the perception of how many of their vehicles could be switched to EV and the internal perception was around 40%. But actually when we looked holistically at the fleet and then looked at the, rather than looking for like for like, we showed a plan which was within the business rules and that the customer could, could work towards and that actually showed that 80 percent of the fleet were suitable for electrification so again through doing this evidence-based analysis really is you know compelling for a business to make those decisions so it should happen before making any decisions yeah absolutely and of course that you you got to 80 percent without changing any business rules so exactly. maybe you know organizationally um, you just have to accept that to go completely um, ultra low emission, you will have to change your business rules uh, and potentially deploy vehicles in a different way than you are today to, to get that, that net zero fleet. And I think as technology advances within the vehicles and longer ranges or alternative options, uh, we're working with some partners who have inventory in the field, for example, which can really help with existing businesses with their operation moving forward. Great, great. Good. We, uh, we often discuss uh, what businesses need to do to reduce their vehicle emissions, but I want to just widen that conversation out a little bit and consider the role of local authorities uh, and, and what they need to do to increase EV uptake in their areas. So again, technology has a role to play here, and I think there's two parts to it. I think the first part is leading by example. So actually embracing technology within their existing fleet to optimise duty cycles and improve productivity within their existing fleet and rolling out charging infrastructure would be a fantastic approach. I think the second part is actually planning. So having the right expertise within the local authorities to have planning, commercial conversations with the likes of companies such as Shell, who have incentive programs to roll out charging infrastructure within the borough but at a low cost or zero cost to the borough to get additional charge points out there. So I think having the right people in place to implement solutions is really important as well as leading by example and showing you know local so I think the first step we've always said is maximizing what you've got with existing assets which local authorities do themselves today before making that transition to EV and equally for 
um, other businesses within that area could do exactly the same. Great. Uh, well, Natalie, uh, that is about all we've got time for. It's been a pleasure talking to you as always. Thank you to the Algorithm people for joining Greenfleet Talks. Thank you, Kate. Thanks thank for your you. time. And thank you for watching. Please tune in to GF365 again soon.